guys and welcome to another video of Linux for absolutely beginners. My name is Chia from Devo Busy Learning and today we'll be going through a service or a system CTL command in Linux. Why? What is the purpose of the service command on and also a system CTL command? We we'll basically use a service command or the system CTL command to start, restart and also stop and enable a service or we some some people will call that a daemon in Linux, right? And a service is just, or a daemon is just a background process that is running to kind of keep something alive in Linux. Now, what will be the main difference between the service command and the system CTL command? The service command is mostly used for um, very old, maybe Linux distribution like CentOS 6 or CentOS 5, stuff like Red Hat 6 or CentOS 6, CentOS 5, you can use a, a service command. But if you want to work like the latest uh, Linux distribution, like Red Hat is uh, maybe uh, Red Hat 8, uh, CentOS 7, CentOS 8, and so on, you will need to use a system CTL command, right? That means we basically, we can just say that the system CTL command, it is just an enhanced version of the service command. Same thing when we are moving forward, we kind of try and we want to do something that is, um, that is really interesting. What happens here is that they basically develop a system CTL command to replay the service command. And at some point, I know for sure that they are going to decommission the service command. Because right now, it is already deprecated, but it's not yet removed. That means Linux can still use this one. Right? If you are working with the uh, latest uh, lit, uh, Linux distribution, you can still use a service command here to go ahead and start stop the service. But if you are going into uh, like CentOS 7, CentOS, uh, uh, CentOS 6, 5, stuff like that, the system CTL command will not work, right? Because I think this was initiated with CentOS 7 and going forward, we basically use the system CTL to start, stop, to start, stop, restart, and enable a service but at some point for sure they will go ahead and kind of remove uh the service the service command out of service because right now it is still working with uh, uh any issue unless uh by the time that i'm recording this video unless i'm mistaken but i'll go ahead and check that now how can you use that if you're using this system ctl command the system CTA command is used to manage services or daemon in Linux. That's what I just mentioned. We can say the system CTL start to basically start the service. So, uh, system CTL stop will stop the service. The status here will go ahead and kind of show you if the service is running or uh, it is stop and so on. And the restart will go ahead and restart that and the enable will go ahead and enable the service. Why are you going to, why do you really need to enable the service? You need to enable the service just in case uh, the server shut down, right? When the server shut down, and when that server is back, you want that service to keep running, to start automatically when the server boot up. Even on Windows operating system, you also have some program that you want those programs to start automatically when you boot up your Windows operating system and you just enable those by yourself. And during boot up process, as soon as your computer boot up, those programs are going to start automatically and sometimes you need to go in there yourself and kind of uh, uh, cancel some because if you have a lot of programs that are going to start when you boot up your uh, Windows operating system, what will happen is that the boot up process will be a little bit slow, right? When you press the power button, it is going to take a while before uh, you can you can do something. Or why? Why? Because when the operating system boot up, it basically have a lot of startup program right in linux also a web server stuff like this if you want like let's say somebody reboot a server or stop and when you start a server you want this daemon to be up and running so that because that is what we keep something called like a web server alive right 
And if you are using something like the service command, you can go ahead here and use it the same thing. You just say service, the package, you stop, and service package, you stop, and so on. You can stop, you can restart, you can enable, and it's almost the same command. But this one here is used for um, most recent uh, Linux distribution, right? And this one is used mainly for like all whole version of any distribution, like I know when we're using uh, back in the day when I was still using like Red Hat 6, CentOS 6, stuff like that, the system CTL command won't work there, but it's going to work on on uh, like CentOS 7, CentOS 8 going forward, Red Hat 8 going forward, and you can use this to basically start and stop the service. Now, we'll be doing some uh, little hands-on here. What happened here is that I'm going to have a couple of hands-on here. We'll go ahead and install Apache, which is just a web server on um on 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 linux ubuntu operating system and i'll go ahead and host a little website here and when i will host that i will go ahead and kind of play with all this how can you install apache i have a couple of comments here but you can also kind of just go to google here and grab everything that i have here right we need to make sure that we update our operating system and when that is updated we'll go ahead and install the wget that we are going to use to uh, download uh, the web content from my S3 bucket and also after that we'll go ahead and install um, unzip that I'm going to use to kind of zip this uh, to unzip this content and here we install Apache 2 and we can navigate to where a web content supposed to to be let me go ahead here and kind of fire up all this command you can copy everything here and you fire it up at once or you can tap one after another let me go ahead here and make sure that i log logging into one of our linux server i'll go ahead here and punch my password and i will switch as a root user and i will just say sudo dash i to be root and i'm going to punch my password again And that is cool. Let me go ahead and push paste all this here and I'll go ahead and run all this. And it will just go ahead and make sure that it have everything installed, that it basically update the operating system, it install the wget package, install onzip package, and finally it's going to install um, uh, the web server. And that is all good. Let me see this here in uh, slash var www.html ls as you guys can see that this is already installed and this is where we're supposed to put a web content right now i'm going to kind of download here if you're trying to tap some command here to check i can go ahead here and tap system ctl and i will just say status and what am i checking here if you don't know the right package that you need to check like right here i'm not seeing the package name i can go to google here and kind of open it. this is where i basically grab all the command here if you see how to install how to install apache 2 apache 2 on ubuntu because right now we are working with Ubuntu distribution. As you guys can see, this guy here is going to give me all the command. And I can see system CTR status Apache 2. And let me go ahead and tap that. Uh, system CTL, system CTL start Apache 2. Yep, it's for sure. I just want to start a service. And let me go ahead here and check the status. As you can see here, it is up and running. And let me also even try the service command to see if that is still working as expected. We said here that if we are using the service command, we say service and we put a package and we say status. Let me go ahead here and say service. And the package is here is called Apache 2. Apache 2 here, and I will say status. And hit enter, as you guys can see that we have the same result. And that's basically what I explained, right? That the system CTL, it is just an enhanced version of the service command. Still, you can still use the service command to stop, start, restart, and enable a 
demon without any issue or a process without any issue. As you guys can see here, if you use the system CTL and check the status, I can see here that it is running, right? And this is basically what keep the web server to be alive. Like right here, if you tab LS, this is where we need to put the web content. Let me go ahead here and I'm going to grab one of this content. This is just going to uh, download this thing from my S2 block and it's just a website that I zip it. Let me run that and it's going to download it. As you guys can see, I can use the unzip, uh, the unzip command line tool now to unzip this. If you unzip this, now that is cool. And I can say RM, have an RF. As you guys can see, I can go ahead and remove the zip file. I don't need that no more. LS. Now, if you had to see LS and say COVID, you guys will see that this is the index.html that the website is looking, right? What does that mean? I can go to my browser and type um, the DNS of this server, which is like what? Uh, it is server four. It is server four. Well, I didn't, I haven't have this thing already. Server four dot anomicatet.com. Let me go ahead here and remove this, but it is server4.anomicatech.com. If you say slash index.html, I mean index.html, and hit enter, it should be able to pull um, index.html. Yeah, that is wrong. Why? Because the uh, well, I need to specify a specific folder, right? That is wrong. I type it wrongly. I need to say slash COVID because I know that my website, it is stored in this folder. And within this folder, I have the index.html that the web server is looking. And if you hit enter here, it should be able to pull the website, just a little website here to check if somebody have COVID or not, right? As you guys can see, it is able to pull the web content. Now, let us play a little bit with this and see what will happen. If you say system CTL and I kind of try to stop the service, for instance, that is status. If you stop the service or I stop the service, the, the, the demon that is running and check the status again one more time. Uh, status. You guys can see here that it is dead. It is not running no more. What does that mean? This means this website also will be down. Why? Because the demon that is keeping up the process, that is keeping up this uh, uh, web server, it is down, right? The website is down. What can you do here to troubleshoot this website? The first thing to troubleshoot this website is to check if the demon or this process it is running. And if you check it, you realize that it is dead. What can you do? You need to go ahead and start it. If you start it, it's going, if you go ahead and say start, and you check the status again, it is running. If you go to the browser and refresh, as you can see that your website is up, right? This is the first step, one of the first step of the website troubleshooting. You need to check if the demon that is basically keeping that website alive. It is up and running. If that demon is dead, the website also will be down and you won't be able to access a website, right? Let me go ahead here and kind of host another little one here. This one here, I'm just going to type uh, to copy everything here, download this and I'll also unzip that. Here. Run these two commands, it basically downloaded this, and we have another one here called article. If you see RM half an RF, I can go ahead and remove this. I can remove this and here LS. Now, if you go on the browser again and type slash article because it also have one index.html in here that the website is that the web so it's like, like the, the, the web server is looking. I mean, if you go ahead here and put this one also and go to the browser and change this thing instead of COVID, if you put article, it is going to pull another website. 
as you can see here, it basically pull another website that is called introduce protocol article. And when we say COVID, it basically pull the one that we have in COVID and so on, right? As you can see here, if you just go ahead here and can stop the demon, let me copy this. You can see here. If you go ahead here, this one should be article, for instance. Let me take the article one again. And if you stop the demon, none of this website will be up. Here, this, these two websites, they are up. If you refresh, no issue. If you refresh, no issue. But as soon as I basically stop the demon, if you go ahead here and stop the demon, the status, you guys can see it is running. Let me go ahead here and stop. And stop. Stop. Hit enter. As you can see, it's taking a while here to stop it. And when it will stop it, if you check the status, you guys can see that the demon is dead. And when the demon is dead, none of this website will be up. Look. See? This can be rich. This can be rich. And most of the time, when you are going, when you are out there also and you tap a domain name, you try to you say you said um www.devopeasylearning.com if you see can be rich that might be one of the reasons it might be because we're updating the website it might be a couple of stuff right as you guys can see the demon here that is holding this one it is not working no more and if you go ahead here and start the demon again let me go ahead here and start start and go ahead and check the status it is up and running and if you hope over here and refresh, you guys can see that website is back. Refresh, this website also is back, right? That's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, please let me know in the comment below. And also, this is just a, a little bit short video to show you guys how to use a system CTL, the service command, and what will be the difference between the system CTL and the service command. But if you want me to deep dive a little bit into this web server stuff, how this web server stuff works, please let me know in the comment below and I'll go ahead and kind of create another video where I will deep dive. I will deep dive a little bit and show you guys how to manipulate this thing, how to troubleshoot it and so on. Thank you. Bye-bye.